What does Hatsune Miku, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Pizza Hut have in common? The fact that they're collaborations in Monster Hunter, of course. Monster Hunter has had some of the most insane, wacky, goofy, and incredibly strange collaborations since it was released all the way back in 2004. From the very first Monster Hunter game until even now with Monster Hunter Rise, there have been many collabs and promotional events that have come to the series in interesting ways. However, there are plenty of them in past games that hunters may not be aware of, mainly because a large amount of them are exclusive to Japanese-only Monster Hunter games. Originally, I wanted to just show off the ones I found noteworthy and interesting, but after going down the rabbit hole of Monster Hunter event collaborations, I was absolutely shocked at the amount of crazy and borderline nonsensical things I found. Even the least interesting collab was something I saw as incredibly fascinating. So in today's video, I'm going to go over all the collaborations that Monster Hunter has done over the years, to my knowledge at least, starting from the very first game and working towards the newest releases. I spent a really long time researching and scouring the internet, predominantly Japanese websites, to find and document as many of them as I could possibly find. That being said, I'm sure there's going to be a couple things I'll miss here and there, but I'd like to believe I'm going to cover nearly all of them in today's video. And as a side note, this video will focus on collabs that are inside Monster Hunter games themselves, and not so much the Monster Hunter collaborations they've done with other games, since that would be a beast of a video on its own. There are plenty of things to cover, so get ready for a jam-packed video today, but I assure you, this is one you're not going to want to miss. Monster Hunter collaborations have humble beginnings, but it is one that sets the precedent for what's to come in future games. The first ever collab was in the first Monster Hunter game in 2004. They collaborated with GMR, which was a gaming magazine back in the day. The cover art for this particular event went hard, by the way. You can tell this is their first collaboration because all they did was paint the letters GMR on a greatsword and called it a day. I do like the ram skull on the hilt and the jagged edges of the sword, but they definitely level up their collaboration skills after this big time. Fast forward to 2007 and things are going to ramp up fast. In Monster Hunter Frontier, essentially Monster Hunter's MMO based on Monster Hunter Dose that ran for 12 years, there were a lot of crazy collaborations, and they came out swinging with the Pizza Hut Longsword, or Pizza Peel as it was called in Japan. All you had to do was get yourself a delicious Pizza Hut pizza to get a digital code for this weapon. This collaboration would happen again later in 2013, and after scouring the entirety of Japanese Monster Hunter YouTube, I found one video showing this off, and it is glorious. I would gladly put that in a wood fire oven and eat it all up. Chef's kiss. There was technically a Pizza Hut collab for Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, but instead of an in-game item, you'd be put into a raffle to get a cool PSP, a t-shirt, and a Monster Hunter game. They wouldn't send you a pizza, though. The year is 2006, and Monster Hunter Dose would get a collaboration with popular Famitsu Gaming Magazine, where you could get a t-shirt and booty short designs for female armor, and a t-shirt and loincloth combo for males. The Famitsu collaboration also offered a longsword. Publishing company Dengeki would also collaborate with a cute hammer design called Politan and Politan G, I think it's some sort of teddy bear or mascot. In 2007, Portable Second introduced the first ever collab with Shonen Jump magazine. Complete with its own armor set, long sword, cannon bowgun, and even branded barrel bombs. In 2008, Monster Hunter Portable Second G would collaborate with Dengeki once again, based on a comic they published for Monster Hunter 2. The event made you fight a one-horned Diabolos, which actually had a really cool exclusively designed armor, along with a very stylish bow. Famitsu returns with even more weapons, a variation of their previous longsword and dose, dual blade fans, along with a gun lance. Lastly, there's this lobster armor set that I believe is a collaboration with like two Japanese TV hosts, I think. I for the life of me could not find more context. Anyways, enjoy lobster armor, dual blades, longsword, hammer, and bowgun that screams at you. The second generation of Monster Hunter games introduced collaborations with Jump, Famitsu, and Dengeki and will continue to work with them for many, many years to come. Jumping to 2009, we have the release of Monster Hunter 3 in Japan, and this is truly when event quest collaborations start finding their place in mainline Monster Hunter games. Unfortunately, most of these collabs remained Japan exclusive, as the items themselves got changed when the game got localized as Monster Hunter Tri. The Tesaiga, also known as the Tetsu Saiga, from Inuyasha was released with the game, and it was so goddamn cool. For Longsword, it's pretty big, coupled with the spirit aura around it, it was a fantastic weapon to brandish and fight with. I couldn't find any footage of it being used in Tri, so here it is in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. This will happen every now and then throughout this video, especially when it comes to the older games. There is a sparsity in footage for these Japan exclusives, but thankfully a lot of the collaborations return in future games and remain relatively unchanged. Also, because a lot of these events get carried over to future games, 
I'll only mention them in the original game they were added in, unless there's a relevant reason to bring them up otherwise. In the English release of Monster Hunter 3, the Tasaiga was replaced by the Tenebra, which was a weapon created in a contest where Capcom let fans design and name a weapon. As much as I love the Tasaiga though, this is one of my personal favorite designs from the entire series. The way it unfolds with unsheathed and the way it looks with the black hole in the center, along with the sound design of the weapon, truly a masterpiece. Another launch item is the jacket from the manga Worst, a cool little jacket with a skull on the back. Once localized, it'd be called the Hellhunter jacket, and would have a similar design, but with no affiliation with an IP of any sort. There was another collaboration with Dengeki, with the Dengeki Saber. This would be localized to the Rising Soul Longsword, which was simply a recolor. I ended up preferring the localized version for this one too, oddly enough. Monster Hunter 3 brought back the Jump Magazine collabs with the Pirate J Switch Axe. The pirate's face is visible sheathed and unsheathed, which is a neat detail. This weapon got localized to the Sinister Saint Switch Axe, which was a fan design like Tenebra and was equally sick. A great sword collab happened with another magazine called Magazine and Rival, I believe, a striking design that later got localized to the Lion's Bane, the last of the fan-made designs. And the final collaboration is with Famitsu Gaming Magazine with this lovely design lance and was recolored as the ML001 lance similar to the Dengeki Longsword. Back to Monster Hunter Frontier, fast forward to 2010 and the next collaboration would be based on the Dead Rising series, which is mostly developed and published by Capcom. This collab happened after the launch of Dead Rising 2 and included dual sword knife gloves, moose head head armor, a boomstick gun lance, and various racing suits. You could get these items if you redeemed a digital code that came with the purchase of the game. Around the same time, there were some great collaborations in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Nagima Magister Nagimaji, or Magical Teacher Nagima, is an anime and manga about magic and fighting and all that good stuff that would lend itself well to a weapon being introduced to Monster Hunter. We got the cool-ass Tenma no Surugi Greatsword. Was always a big fan of this design on my Portable 3rd playthrough. However, the absolute best collab in my opinion when it came to Portable 3rd was the one with Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. And I know I said I was going to focus only on the collabs within Monster Hunter, but come on, look at this. You gotta gun down these monsters as Snake? This is incredible! Technically though, the Peace Walker event is based on Monster Hunter Freedom Unite at the time instead of Portable 3rd. Essentially, you go on an island to hunt monsters like Feline, Velociprey, Tigrex, and even their own creation, the Gear Rex. A Metal Gear monster. Insane. A gun based on a bow gun can be made, and you can cook a ration like a well-done steak. You can also set the controls to be more like Monster Hunter for this event, which was a real neat touch. Now, in Portable 3rd, it's time for the Monhunt fans to eat. The event had this incredible cinematic in the Peace Walker style. You could dress up as Snake or the boss. When successfully cooking a steak, they say so tasty in their own voices. The feline companions will also get geared up. They can enter and crawl around in a box like Snake, which is incredible. You have to do the quest itself bowgun only, kind of like you're shooting around in Peace Walker. The Metal Gear promotional event is definitely an all-timer. Portable 3rd also had a collaboration with Jump Magazine that included the Pirate J set, Jolly Roger Dual Blades, and brought back the Switch Axe for Monster Hunter 3. You could give your feline a Jump Armor set too. A collab was done once again with Famitsu. This collab would bring in some new gun lances. There was a fashionable promotional event with Uniqlo, which also ends up being a series staple later on. And for fans of the manga Crows, there was a cool jacket you could get. They also collaborated with Baki in this game, introducing a stylish hammer. Once again, they collaborated with Dengeki, this time it's a cool looking hunting horn. Detective Conan joined the fray as well, with an outfit for your feline, as well as a collab with the Dark Souls of Monster Hunter games, Monster Hunter Diary, Poco Poco Iru Village. Look at this cute little helmet. And finally, Yaiba is a manga about a traveling samurai boy, and this series got a dope longsword for their collaboration. Compared to previous games, Portable 3rd was ramping up in terms of how many collaborations it had, which makes sense since it's one of the best-selling Monster Hunter games in Japan of all time. In the same year, there were some absolutely nutty collaborations that would be introduced with Monster Hunter 3G. First up is Shingeki no Kyojin, aka Attack on Titan. You get the whole Survey Corps outfit along with the dual blades. Can't swing around with the 3D maneuver gear to take down this Duramboros though, unfortunately. I know I got some JoJo fans watching this, well y'all are gonna enjoy this one. So this is a stand, inside a hammer it seems. His name is Crazy Diamond, and if you hit your allies with it, it actually heals them. As cool as this looks, I wonder how comfortable it is to actually hold this. I love that you fight Brachios for this event, as well he just screams JoJo. 
This hammer would be later reskinned in the West as the Majestic Scepter. The Jojo collab also came with a mask for either Chacha or Kayamba, called the Harvest Mask. Also, it came with a sick guild card background and Jojo pose. There's going to be a lot of guild card stuff that I'm going to gloss over, but keep in mind that usually if there's an event in a mainline game, it tends to have a couple coinciding guild cards, poses, and smaller stuff like that. Kororo Gunso is a series about a group of aliens led by Sergeant Kororo that is tasked by the army of planet Charon to prepare Earth for their invasion. However, the platoon of five ends up being friends with humans in Inner Tokyo and their plans of invasion stuck up indefinitely. The big Plesioth and baby Plesioth event quest would get you the Kororo Gunso helmet and a Kororo Gunso mask for Chacha or Kayamba. Very cute. Famitsu returns with an exquisitely designed switch axe. Looks amazing. The Koro Koro Monthly Manga Magazine had a collaboration bringing in a sword and shield design reminiscent of a thunderbolt. Dengeki is back with yet another amazingly designed gun lance. Seriously, this looks awesome. And you can usually tell what used to be Dengeki weapons in the localized version of the game. The return of the jump collab introduced a new mask for your companion, along with the pirate greatsword. The first ever promotional event with Universal Studios Japan brought in a lovely armor set as well as a longsword. USJ will be seen in pretty much every mainline Monster Hunter game after this and is always a treat to look at. Baki returns in 3G with a sick ass greatsword. Love the promotional art for this too. So powerful. That wraps up the collabs introduced within Monster Hunter 3G. There was a lot of new stuff. My personal highlight has to be the JoJo and Attack on Titan collabs. Something about anime that fits so well with Monster Hunter. Also, keep in mind most of the collaborations for Monster Hunter 3 and Portable 3rd were also within Monster Hunter 3G, so it was quite beefy in terms of how many promotional weapons and armor it had. Before the release of Monster Hunter 4, there were a bunch of exciting collabs done in Monster Hunter Frontier. Its next collaboration was done with Darkstalkers, bringing some awesome skins into the game. Morrigan fans, rejoice. A lot of the Frontier collabs just involve you wearing equipment that just changes your character into a character from an IP, and I'm all for it. Also, uh, Thermo Rome is an award-winning series that follows an ancient Roman architect named Lucius, who is having trouble coming up with ideas. One day, he discovers a hidden tunnel underneath a spa that leads him to a modern Japanese bathhouse. Inspired by the innovations found there, he creates his own spa, Roma Thermae, bringing the modern ideas to his time. Thermo Rome collaborated with Monster Hunter Frontier in 2012, where you would swing around a naked Roman greatsword. They unfortunately edited out his cock, dick, and balls. This greatsword also has the best sharpening animation of all time. God damn. 2013 would be a huge year for collaborations at Frontier, starting off with Onimusha. You could get yourself some sick armor sets, an Onimusha-style gun as a bow gun, a greatsword as well as a longsword. I'm personally very fond of the greatsword, I would definitely rock that if I had the opportunity. Next up is a sick Fate Stay Night collab. We got some cool outfits, a great sword, long sword, dual blades, and a bow. I also gotta mention how I love these videos they started making for the promotional events in Monster Hunter Frontier. Makes my life easier for this video, and it's always a fun watch to boot. Just wish they did one for every single collab, though. This event also had a part two with even more armor and weapons. Now, guys, I need to show you one of the greatest collaborations in Monster Hunter history. Hatsune Miku Monster Hunter. Not only do you get this incredible trailer, you get the Miku outfit, which is not gender locked, thankfully, along with the Miku hunting horn that plays proof of a hero in Miku's voice, along with a megaphone hammer. I love the energy of this collab so much. Miku fits in perfectly with this goofy ass series. I always adore the effort they put into making hunting horn special for these collaborations. Also, they collabed with Miku again, with Snow Miku. Hell yeah, brother. The next collab is a little different, but collaborations like these will happen every now and then from this point on. Essentially, they got the creature designer from Kamen Rider, Yasushi Nirasawa, to take a hand at designing some armor sets for the game. Dubbed the Diver series, they were based on the monster Espinas, and I enjoy these designs very much. He would later design even more armor sets and weapons for the game. Speaking of cool designs, Sengoku Basara was next to join the fray. Definitely not the last Capcom collab they'll ever do, I'll tell you that much. I love the look of the dual spears in this one, I just know they would be satisfying as hell to use. 
I know I got some Fire Emblem fans watching this, and in 2013, Fire Emblem Awakening was all the rage. Fulfill your dreams of becoming either Krom or Lucina in this event, with a cool bow and sword and shield with the crest from the game. Yeah, guys, you can use the Fire Emblems. Wow. This event was likely brought on because Monster Hunter has been on the 3DS with 3G and the newly released Monster Hunter 4. Still surprising to see a Nintendo collab in Frontier, though. Yes, everyone, this is now Monster Hunter Frontier featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Another cool set and cool weapons. You know the drill. And goddamn, is this trailer cool as hell. Get him, Dante! Like I said earlier, 2013 was quite the year for these collabs. Frontier fans were eating good. And as I mentioned earlier, Monster Hunter 4 dropped for the Nintendo 3DS around the same time, and for a mainline game, the collaborations it had were equally exciting. Like the One Piece! Tony Tony Choppa Feline Skin? Monkey the Luffy Straw Hat? Gummo Gummo Dual Blades? The Zoro Triple Katanas? One in the mouth? The Nami Insect Glaive Pole? The Usopp Sniper Bow? Oh. As a big fan of 4 Ultimate and One Piece, I am personally hurt we never got this in the West. I really am. They put so much love into these items, man. Next up is a collaboration with the anime Silver Spoon. The collab was just... A giant spoon, hunting horn, and it made the sound of a rooster crowing and a horse neighing when played. Insane. I'm sure there's some anime-related reason for this. Hiromishima, aka the mangaka for Fairy Tale, is a part of the next collaboration. He was tasked with designing some new armor and weapons, and boy does it look sick. I love the design of the dual blades. I really enjoy when Monster Hunter brings guest designers to design some gear. Dengeki is back, but this time with a whole boatload of weapons, and they look dope. Sword and shield, hammer, and a nice electric theme makes for a great set of weapons. Out of all these, my favorite has to be the sword and shield. That sword may as well be a longsword, goddamn. Famitsu sneaks its way in with the fox crest longsword, stylish as always. For uh, Grandpa Danger fans, here's Grandpa Danger with his classic pink poop. Silly little guy. Grandpa Danger is a comedy series, uh, that's all I know about it. But I'm sure the Danger fandom is huge. Baki is back. Now you can become Yujiro Hanma with an armor set. Baki fans eat good in every Monster Hunter game for sure. Jump returns once again with a fabulous armor set. There's also a skeletal ghost feline with a hook, and this revolver insect glaive with the kinsect being a ghost bird. My favorite part of this definitely is the fact that the bird stays perched on your shoulder instead of your arm. Tight. USJ is back in a huge way with a lovely armor set, a fantastic charge blade, and of course, an outfit for your feline. There's a little Kapuban collab with a feline outfit. I have no idea what a Kapuban is, nor can I find any information on it throughout the entirety of the internet, but there he is. If you're a Kapuban lore master, please enlighten me in the comments. I know I got a lot of Chris Pratt fanatics watching, so you're gonna like what's coming up next. Mario and Luigi felines. Make them stomp on your favorite Koopas. Yahoo! Uh, Mamma Mia! Lastly, we have an incredibly stylish Uniqlo collab, along with a cool, custom greatsword. Didn't know a clothing brand knew how to make weapons, but here we are. Monster Hunter 4 really introduced some monumental crossovers for the mainline games, and that continued with the expansion in Monster Hunter 4G. First up, let's talk about the Magi collab. Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic, is a Japanese fantasy adventure manga series based on numerous stories from 1001 Nights, also known as Arabian Nights, most notably the tales of Aladdin, Ali Baba, and Sinbad the Sailor. The collaboration brought forth a great sword. The sword itself stays on your waist when sheathed, which is already a bit out of the norm, but it also grows into a huge weapon when unsheathed. Definitely fits the theme of the anime quite well. They also have a cool wand of Aladdin insect glaive, the kinsect is like a swarm of butterflies. I'm always a fan of custom kinsects like these. Unfortunately, though, for event ones, they can't be upgraded or swapped out in this game. Seven Deadly Sins has a collab that includes a broken sword and scabbard as an SNS called the Dragon Handle. When you unsheathe the weapon, you don't actually see a shield, but you can still use one. It's just invisible. It makes you appear that all you have is a one-handed broken sword, though, so fighting with it is kind of badass. Up next is a big one, y'all. We have the Legend of Zelda collaboration. Fashioned in the style of Skyward Sword, you have Link's outfit, the Master Sword, the Hylian Shield, and the Hero's Bow. Cool to see them go all out for an IP of this caliber. 4G introduced even more USJ stuff. 
I'm always in awe when looking at the designs for the USJ promotional events. The Star Knight armor, for example, is one of the best full sets in the game, and the Star Knight sword is one of the sickest sword and shield designs I've ever seen. God damn. Jump is back with an armor set worthy of G-Rank, a new Palico outfit, and a Pirate J charge blade. Another Baki collab? Now you can truly be the Baki. At first glance, the dual blades look like a shield of some sort, but it's actually just invisible. You punch with your fists instead, which is badass. But you know what's even more badass than that? Sonic the Hedgehog, everybody. Yes, you can dress your feline up like the Hedgehog himself, and you get a cute little sword from Sonic and the Black Knight. When your palico walks and jumps around, you hear the classic sound of the Sonic Spin Dash. Now the issue is the cat would often get stuck in random places and the sound would play continuously. Hearing this again reminds me of how much this haunted me back in the day. Taiko Drum Master is a popular rhythm game in Japan developed by Namco, and it has a wonderful and cute hunting horn introduced with its collaboration with Monster Hunter. The notes for the horn even match the little icons within its game. The character Dawn makes cute faces and sounds while you walk and fight. Amazing. Street Fighter kicks its way into Monster Hunter with these adorable Blanca and Chun-Li feline costumes. They come equipped with classic Street Fighter sound bites along with cute custom animations. Can't get enough of these Palico outfits, seriously. Which brings me to the next collab, Mega Man. Similar to Street Fighter, you get the fun classic Mega Man sound effects along with the power of the dog. The next collaboration is so goddamn sick, y'all. Metroid, baby. The armor, the bowgun arm cannon, the sound effects, it's glorious. Even has different animations for different shot types. Did I mention the collab also came with a zero suit Samus set? Nah, is that Meowte from Devil May Cry? He's ready to take on some demons for real. The feline costume collabs don't end here. It's time. Straight from New Leaf, we have Isabel and Rossetti from Animal Crossing. I love this collaboration so much, it's, it's so perfect. Isabel and Rossetti speak in Animalese, of course, truly an immersive experience. Also, I had no idea Rossetti had legs. Who knew? Just like the collab with Yasushi Nirasawa and Hiro Mishima, Tetsuya Nomura was tasked to design armor and a weapon for Monster Hunter. And boy did my man deliver. Very reminiscent of Diabolos from Final Fantasy, this set has a pair of crossed arms in the chest, along with a cool pair of wings. The longsword dubbed the Wing of Judgment is so goddamn slick. This collab also came with a Warrior of Light outfit for your palico. Something that's really cool about this collaboration is the fact that the design was so sick that they made it into a figure and sold it. I gotta find this, man. I, I need this. The final collab for Monster Hunter 4G is not technically a real promotional event. Despite working with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in 3G, this Bansho outfit is dubbed Pet Club instead of being tied to the JoJo IP, despite it pretty much being a one-to-one -one replica of Jotaro's outfit. Either way, it's in the game, and you can deck out your palico with a sweet fit. Monster Hunter 4 and 4G brought some bangers in terms of collabs. But before we talk about the collaborations within Monster Hunter Cross and Double Cross, let's head to Monster Hunter Frontier in the year 2014 and beyond. We already talked about the promotional event with Attack on Titan in Monster Hunter 3G, but since this offered some new stuff and a sick trailer, I may as well talk about this one too. You could basically wear armor to turn yourself into Eren, Armin, or Mikasa, and they had a sword and shield with their logo as the shield. Love this shot of them taking down the Lao Shen Lung Titan, for real. Around this time, the light novel series Infinite Stratos also got a collaboration with some sweet new outfits and weapons. Street Fighter returns once again. This time you can pick between Ken or Kami and shadow box your way to victory. Capcom Strategy Simulations RPG Euro Historia gets some regal looking armor sets. And from the coveted Trail series, Trails of Cold Steel, there was a collab where you can dress up as the protagonists and equip weapons from the game. Madoka Magica fans rejoice because the Madoka collab in Frontier is fantastic. The outfits, the weapons, the little creatures, it has all that and more. If you're a fan of the Fate IP, you might soil yourself because there are collaborations with Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, Fate Apocrypha, and Fate Extella in Frontier. My favorite aspect out of all these collabs has to be the Fate Stay feline outfits. Meow. And the final Frontier collab before we get into Monster Hunter Cross and Double Cross is, well, let's just say I saved the best for last. Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
God, this trailer for this collaboration is so goddamn good. Get in the robot, Shinji! You can wear the Eva plug suits or become the Evas themselves. Also, Pen Pen. Glorious. Once again, Frontier was not afraid to get the heavy hitters for these collaborations. That being said, the Monster Hunter series was about to hit a new level with Monster Hunter Cross and Double Cross, also known as Generations and Generations Ultimate in the West. Generations is essentially a celebration of the series, and what's a celebration without events and collaborations? Before we get into it, let me preface this by saying that since it was hard to distinguish which events actually appeared in Cross versus Double Cross, I'm just going to introduce all the collaborations for both games at once. Another important thing to note is that these games introduce Prowlers, which essentially lets you play the game as a Palico. Now, the coolest aspect about that is that you can equip the Palico event armors they introduced with these games along with the collaborations they brought back. So yes, you can fight as Jojo Cat and much, much more. And lastly, for some reason, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate left in a huge chunk of collaborations that we typically wouldn't see in the West. If you got the game, go check out the event quests. You may be surprised at what event equipment you have access to. It is by far the Monster Hunter game with the most amount of collaborations available to the West. Okay, let's get started. Monster Hunter Cross starts strong with an Okami collaboration. Before Palamutes, you have to turn your cat into this dog. And as I mentioned earlier, you can be the Prowler with the outfit on, and that makes these feline outfit collabs that much more exciting to see. The science fiction anime series Macross Delta flies in with a collaboration that has your feline look like a little mech. The previous games had a Zelda collab, but Cross brings in another Legend of Zelda collaboration, this time based on Wind Waker. You just get to be Toon Link, and you can use your Wind Waker as a weapon. They didn't change any sound effects for this event, which honestly makes it funnier hearing cat noises out of this soulless puppet of a creature. I love it. You know what? Since we're on the topic of feline outfits, let's just go through all of the ones these games had to offer. Yoa Mushi Pedal is a bicycling series that got itself a collab where you attack with a cyclist. He kind of looks like one of them freaky titans, low-key. Monster Hunter collaborates once again with Monster Hunter Diary. This time, it's a Tigrex outfit in the style of the game. Very cute. Ghosts and Goblins joins in with a medieval armor set for your feline. Zozo Zombie is a show about a kid zombie up to some crazy shenanigans, and you can dress yourself up just like him. Here's a sick one. Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, <clears throat> uh, you can dress your feline up as a dark magician. Badass. For fans of Fairy Tale, you'll enjoy this happy outfit you can slip into. And if you want to jump scare your friends in your lobby, feel free to craft the feline outfit in collaboration with Monster Hunter Stories. Or don't. Or don't. Ace Attorney fans can get themselves a Phoenix Wright outfit with his classic Yelly Lawyer text in hand. Not sure if it says objection, hold it, or something else though. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, here's a fun one, a collaboration with Sailor Moon for its 25th anniversary. Love the effort they put into this trailer. It looks great. I love Sanrio stuff, but I'll admit I was not aware of who Karimi-chan was before today. Just basically a big piece of salmon for a head. Uh, delicious. But yeah, you can dress up your feline as a tasty treat. For fans of Yatsuba, you can also become Danbo through this collaboration. Another collab with Worst. This time, instead of a stylish jacket, you can just straight up pimp your feline out with this drip. And the last feline outfit only collab is another Nintendo collaboration. Star Fox, everybody. Fox only, Sandy Plains, no potions. I really love the giant ass gun they give him for this. Wh why he guns so big? There will still be a few more feline outfits in the next list of collaborations, but they won't be the sole focus anymore. Nevertheless, you Prowler fanatics are eating good. Starting off strong is the collaboration with Breath of the Wild. You get yourself Link's outfit, accompanied by a hood if you wish. There is a bow fashioned like the ancient bow from the game, and you can get yourself a Korok outfit for your feline. I like how they either give you an outfit that transforms your feline completely, or an outfit like this that's clearly your cat wearing something from Spirit Halloween. Famitsu returns with even more unique weapon designs. Personally, I'm a big fan of this bow gun. Jump is back with another collab, this time with a lance and bow. They really like putting the skeleton face on all their stuff. I do like how the arrow comes out of his mouth, though. 
And another return, of course, is the lovely USJ with some new armor and stylish dual blades, once again showing us that Universal Studios got good taste in design. Hiro Mishima from Fairy Tail returns this time to design a fantastic longsword to accompany his armor set from the previous game. Detective Conan scuttles its way back with this suit that turns your character into a shadow, and from the dark fantasy series Drifters, it is a very cool looking greatsword that has the appearance of a longsword, but it's pretty hard. Uniqlo also returns with fashionable attire once again, this time with what looks like some dragon skin on the jacket and the shoes. What are those? You can also drip out your feline as usual, and they seem to have a Uniqlo soccer ball bracket. Damn. Small Baki collab, you can get yourself a palico fashioned after Kayo Retsu. Ushio and Tora is a series that follows the adventures of a boy named Ushio Aotsuki, the son of a temple keeper, who after having reluctantly released the imprisoned powerful tiger-like monster Tora, the two begin a journey together fighting against supernatural beings threatening the world. You get the Ushio outfit with the long flowing hair and a spear-like insect glaive. Much like the bird that perches on your shoulder in the jump set, so does Tora in this one. If you have the Ushio helmet equipped, it extends your hair regardless of which weapon you unsheathe. Next collab is dope. Strider enters the fray. Become the ninja. Stride your way into defeating your enemies. Show by Rock is a mobile rhythm video game, and they got themselves a stylish collaboration with this metal guitar hunting horn. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was Gak's character Genesis from Crisis Core, but uh, yeah, I was definitely wrong on that. The more you know. Garo gets a sick collab with Monster Hunter here. The armor in Garo is so well designed. I was first introduced to this series with their promotional event with Final Fantasy XIV, so it's cool to see it again while researching for this video. Honorable mention to this giant ass greatsword. Big sword? Cool. Kingdom is a series that provides a fictionalized account of the Warring States period primarily through the experience of the War Orphan Shin and his comrades as he fights to become the greatest general under the heavens, and in doing so, unifying China for the first time in 500 years. The collab introduces an armor set from the series, as well as a sword and shield. Alright, I've saved some heavy hitters for last year. Fire Emblem is back once again, this time with a male and female armor based on Marth. The Emblem Shield is back as well. It's great to be able to rep Fire Emblem both in Frontier and in Generations now. Probably one of the nuttiest collabs has to be the one with Hunter Hunter. Based on a pivotal moment in the series, you get to be buff older gone with a lot of hair. And I mean a lot of hair, man. Yeah, damn, it sways as you walk around too. It's actually kind of sick. The final collaboration for Cross and Double Cross is so amazing to me, being a big fan of Gudetama. You get to become a big egg yolk in this extremely unique cell shaded outfit. Reminds me of those anime cell shaded outfits from Fortnite. You can also get an incredibly cute Gudetama Palico outfit. But the best part of this collab has to be this frying pan hunting horn with Gudetama sizzling around in it. Just listen to the sounds it makes. And that wraps up the wonderful world of collaborations within Cross and Double Cross. Again, one of the most jam-packed games in Monster Hunter history in terms of the sheer amount of collabs. Around this time, a spin-off game known as Monster Hunter Stories was released. Basically, it has a lot of elements similar to Pokemon, and it lets you ride and battle with monsters. This game only had three collaborations, but they were really cool, so I wanted to talk about them real quick. First up is the collaboration with Kumamon, who is a mascot of a government prefecture in Japan. Since he's a bear, they let you reskin your Arzuros as Kumamon, as well as give you a little hat for your freak of a friend here, along with a cute little armor set for yourself. The next collaboration is with Puzzles and Dragons. Essentially, you can do some DLC to unlock yourself Kuronai Gukami, who's got quite the badass design. And lastly, the Legend of Zelda collab. This one is truly special. The way it's stylized and looks is so nice. You get Epona as a monstie and you can just ride your horse around like it's Hyrule Field. And they even added Majora's Mask for your companion. They put so much love and care into this. I really appreciate this collaboration. And that ends all the promotional events for Monster Hunter Stories. Let's finish off the rest of Monster Hunter Frontier. You're not gonna wanna miss what's in store for this game. Before Monster Hunter Frontier shut down, it had some great collaborations. God rest its soul. Breath of Fire was introduced with some cool armor and weapons as per usual, and the browser-based RPG Imperial Saga gets a sick collab with its own trailer. Look at that! Thief Cat! Dope! Now does a game really even exist if it hasn't collaborated with Nier Automata? 9S and 2B are back to their regular list of shenanigans. They're so silly. But you know what isn't silly, I think? The collaboration with Fantasy Star Online 2. 
I love how this mech just chills here in the town square. The armor and weapon designs for Fantasy Star are so iconic, it's really cool to see them in a Monster Hunter game. These little chickies got the moves too, man. Next up is another Mega Man collab. Instead of your felines being Mega Man, you are Mega Man. Like a giant Mega Man guy. This might be my favorite Mega Man event. And I save the absolute best collaboration in Monster Hunter Frontier for last. The Fishman. Yes, the Fishman. It is a fish, and it is a man. This fight probably single-handedly terrorized the entire nation of Japan, if I had to guess. Based on the horror manga series Higanjima, this Fishman Oni is probably one of the greatest fights of all time. And that is all the collaborations for Monster Hunter Frontier. I'm sure if it didn't get shut down, we would get a whole bunch of more wacky collabs, but speaking of wacky collabs, the collaborations in Monster Hunter Explore are some of the most insane the series have ever seen. Monster Hunter Explore is now a discontinued Japanese-only mobile game, but it had a hell of a run. Attack on Titan is back in a major way. Well, we've seen this before. Eren and Mikasa survey core armor and weapons, uh, what's new? Well, a big part of a lot of Monster Hunter Explore collaborations is the fact that they actually involve the monster, meaning they usually reskin them in some sort of way. And in this collab, Devil Joe gets reskinned into the Colossal Titan. Do Colossal Titans have tails? If so, do they eat them? Anyways, this is but only a taste of what's to come. Next is another Madoka Magica collaboration with armor and weapons we've seen before, but with a really cute reskin of Lagombi to fight. I love his little vest. Sengoku Basara returns once again, this time with some new armor and weapons, and Street Fighter comes back bringing forth Akuma with his silly little haircut. Fate Extella gets a collab, along with Fate Stay Night once again. This time we have a reskinned Golden Diablos with a broken and corrupted horn it seems. Honestly, these reskins have a decent amount of work put into them for a mobile game, uh, I'm impressed. The next collaboration is with the mobile game Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Use the power of the crystal to take on what seems to be like a behemoth skin Zenogre. Also, cool weapon designs, not gonna lie. Okay, I'm very envious of this Phoenix Wright promotional event. Not only do you get these incredible character costumes, but look at this lance. Imagine pointing this at a monster and yelling objection, man. It's, it's perfect, I need it, it's so goofy looking. Please, Capcom. Next up is another Devil May Cry collab. Don yourself in Dante or Virgil's outfit and weapons. Seven Deadly Sins returns with the broken sword once again, but now you can wear Meliodas's outfit. Did I say that right? You get to also fight this really cool custom version of Seregios. Resident Evil had a collab with Monster and Explorer. You got this big gas can thing. I'm not really sure what it is or what it does, but it sure looks menacing. Maybe it's the secret 15th weapon of Monster Hunter. There was a cute official Sanrio collab where you could wear a Hello Kitty outfit, a Hello Kitty dress, along with a Pom Pom Purin mascot outfit. This kind of looks terrifying. Why is it shaped like this? Plenty of fun Sanrio characters in this collaboration for you. Fairy Tale is back, but this time you get more than just the happy outfit for your feline. You get outfits, weapons, and you get to face the Destruction Wyvern Rathalos. Love the color scheme of this guy. Basically just an Abyssal Glagyricus with wings at this point. Kamen Rider gets an official collab for its 20th anniversary, along with a bunch of cool armor sets. Darkstalkers returns again. Magi poofs back in. It's essentially the same, aside from a few extra items as well. Onimusha also makes its way back with some similar items as last time. Things get interesting with the Mega Man X collaboration. You can be Mega Man, like Frontier, except it's not stylized. You now look like a grown-ass man or woman. You can also dress up as Zero, though. Nice. I'm saving the best collabs for last year. Next up is a collaboration with the hit anime Demon Slayer. You might have heard of it. This one's a big one. Lots of armor sets and weapons of your favorite Demon Slayer characters. I'm a big fan of the Nezuko in a box bowgun. You think it's comfy in there? This collab features a demon Rajang fight, as if he wasn't scary enough. Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's back and better than ever. Not only do we get returning outfits, there's new weapons and armors as well, but the coolest feature are the reskin monsters here. A Gore Magala fashioned as an angel, Tigrex as Eva Unit 2, and Brachidios as Eva Unit 1, which is just perfect for him. This really makes me want to see reskin event monsters in the future with Monster Hunter. And last but definitely not least is the Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist collaboration. 
Edward Elric and Spear Longsword, great. Winry costume and panda sidekick, fantastic. Alphonse Elric, Diablos that runs at you like a freak of nature that needs to be sent to the pits of hell? Awesome. Uh, wait, wait, what? No, seriously, what is this thing, man? This has got to be one of the greatest collaborations of all time. It's settled. It's definitely a contender with Fishman Oni. And that's all the collaborations for Monster Hunter Explore. Definitely some of the zaniest they've done in the series. This also would be the final Japan-only collaborations for now, because after this point, the Monster Hunter games have been released internationally simultaneously, meaning the way event quests happen are very different now. Basically, things that were Japan-exclusive and wouldn't come to the West just don't end up happening at all as collaborations anymore. That doesn't stop other IPs in Japan collaborating with Monster Hunter for their games, but it does affect us for games like Monster Hunter World and Rise. That being said, there are still some great and interesting collaborations to discuss. Monster Hunter World and Iceborne had a decent amount of promotional events. First up is the collaboration with Horizon Zero Dawn. The first collab with them would introduce Alloy's armor along with Alloy's Warbow. You can also put a little robot costume on your feline. It's cool to see an event in a similar format in previous games, but in this great looking engine. Everything is so damn HD. In Iceborne, Alloy returns with some new toys. You can craft the Storm Slinger prototype light bowgun, a neat focus pendant along with the Shield Weaver Plus armor set, as well as the nutty Adept Storm Slinger. Your Palico once again gets a new weapon and armor set fashioned in the style of a bear. And that's not all. Yet another armor set, the Banuk Plus, with three new pendant types. Overall, quite the level up from the base world collaboration. Unfortunately, this is all PS4 exclusive. Street Fighter returns in high definition. You can be the buff-ass Ryu or the buff-ass Sakura in this collaboration. You can use the Hadouken and Shoryuken gestures to do some damage, which is actually pretty cool. The Shoryuken can do stun damage to knock a monster out. Fantastic. Mega Man is back once again. This time it's for your Palico like the good old days. Feed him sausage to make him happy. The coolest part of this collaboration is that depending on the weapon you're using, it changes the background music to a specific theme based on the Mega Man games. Honestly impressive. Dante is back again, who would have thunk? He looks great in Monster Hunter World, and as always, has a stylish entrance with the collaboration trailer. You get his weapon, which is his sword, but it's actually a charge blade, and you glow red when you can activate a guard point, which is awesome. You can craft his armor as always, but the coolest part of the DMC collab is the shooting emote that comes with it, and yes, it does damage. I love all the event-specific gestures. Universal Studios Japan. It's like greeting an old friend at this point. This event introduces the Azure Star Blade Longsword as well as the Azure Star Palico set. And we can't forget the Azure Star Lord armor. And in Iceborne, you can obtain a new bow, new Palico armor, and the Azure Age armor set as well. The event also comes with a little pendant. A huge collaboration that came to Monster Hunter World was the one done with Final Fantasy XIV. This isn't your ordinary run of the mill collab, there is a lot to unpack here. First off, you can get the Draken armor to fashion yourself in the style of a dragoon, and this is coupled with the Gaybolg insect glaive. Not only is the spear itself sick, but you can get the Dragon Soul Kinsect along with it to use, and it looks fantastic. The collaboration even comes with a Bacon Behemoth Poogie costume. One of the most interesting things you can get from this event is the Jump Emote. You essentially jump down like a dragoon, but aside from it looking cool, it actually gives you invincibility frames, and you can use it to dodge an attack from our friend here. And who's the friend? Well, Behemoth, of course. This collaboration brought an entirely new monster to the game with a unique way of fighting him. You're supposed to take him on like it's a Final Fantasy XIV four-man raid, two DPS, a healer, and a tank. But if you try hard enough, you can definitely solo him. He rains down meteors and just has a myriad of crazy attacks. He even has an extreme version to fight. It's crazy they went to these lengths for this collaboration. This collab also introduces the Cactor Endemic Life to the Wild Spire Wastes, and you can shoot out a thousand needles to do some big, big damage. Another collaboration that brought forth a unique enemy is the promotional event with The Witcher 3. But let's first talk about the event quest itself where you play as Geralt of Rivia. Yep, you get to be the big man himself, and fight a Leshen in this quest. Once you do that, you have access to the Ancient Leshen fight that you can take on yourself or with friends. It's a very unique fight, summons a bunch of branches and other spooky things. You can craft armor to look like Geralt or Ciri. You can craft a Witcher's Silver Sword, as well as a neck outfit for your Palico. The collab also has a unique gesture, the Igni spell, that can do damage as well. Overall, I enjoy how they implemented Witcher mechanics in the event quest. It was a lot of fun. Monster Hunter and Ubisoft collaborate with the Assassin's Creed event. There are some interesting stuff for this collab. You can receive the Assassin's Hood, which increases movement speed and allows you to hide quicker, which makes sense for an assassin. You can deal greater damage to an unsuspecting monster with it, but as soon as you hit them, the mantle goes away. 
You can obtain the Bayek layered armor as well. Can't mix and match with this though, you gotta commit to the whole fit. In December 3rd, 2021, this event was removed, but you could still keep your items if you got them. I'm not sure if it will ever officially return. The next collaboration for Worldborn was Resident Evil, specifically with the Resident Evil 2 remake, and I like this one a lot. You can make the Leon set as well as the Claire one. There's a Tofu Survivor pendant that makes some sounds, the Umbrella pendant. The event brings some Resident Evil items for your house, along with some zombie gestures. My favorite thing from this event is the Mr. X skin for the handler. It's perfect. Up next is the final collab for World and Iceborne, and just like Assassin's Creed, this one is currently discontinued, and that is Monster Hunter, the movie. Yes, Monster Hunter collab with the Monster Hunter movie. The Mad Lads actually did it. Mia Jovovich makes it into Monster Hunter World, everybody. As goofy as this event is, I actually like the fight against the giant Rathalos. The rewards for this collab is the Artemis armor set, and, uh, well, aside from guild card stuff, that's really it. I guess you can also get a feeling of accomplishment for helping Mia fight off evildoers and whatnot. Overall, Monster Hunter World and Iceborne didn't have that many events, but I will say the ones they did have were packed with a lot of interesting and unique elements that I did quite enjoy. Now we're moving on to the final list of collaborations here, folks. We're almost at the end. Monster Hunter Rise. In general, there aren't too many collaborations for this game, but they're still pretty fun. Rise introduces the Palamute, which is a buddy who fights with you that you can also ride as a mount. You can't play as a Palamute like the way you could play as a Prowler in Generations, though. Anyways, the point being, this opens up a new world for collaborations involving Palamutes like this Okami collab, for example. It's back, and now you can have Amaterasu with you in a much more real way than a little costume on your Palico. A very fitting collaboration for this game. I'm glad it happened. They continued the Palamute trend with the Mega Man update. No giant Mega Man outfit this time, just a Robodog. And when you run, you go into full boost mode. Sick. Sonic the Hedgehog is back once again in Monster Hunter. This time, the Sonic Palico won't shred your ears off. The aesthetics of this collaboration are interesting, to say the least. Hey, maybe it's your cup of tea. If you feed your Sonic Palico Felvin Bombs, it turns into Super Sonic. The Chaos Emeralds. Anyways, you can get some Sonic-themed drip or some Tails-themed fits for your dog, if that's your thing. Ghosts and Goblins returns to Monster Hunter with this crazy-ass layered armor set. You can be the silly little knight Arthur, and instead of kunai, you can throw silly little spears instead. You also get a special victory screen with this layered armor on. This is but a taste of the greatest collaboration within this game, and the final one to boot. Street Fighter. Similar to the collab in Monster Hunter Explorer, this one is centered around Akuma, but in a much different way. This layered armor appears the same whether or not you are a male or female body type in the game. It changes your voice to Akuma's as well. Akuma's sword and shield is invisible if you're wearing the Akuma layered armor, but if it's unsheathed, you get this red aura so you can tell. Some basic attacks outside the shield bash have stun values when you're specifically wearing the Akuma layer armor. Similar to how you throw spears as Arthur, Akuma's kunines turn into Go Hadoukens instead. They deal more damage and can stun, but you're stuck in place. And in the air, you do a Zanku Hadouken. Your Sword and Shield Silkbind moves are modified as Akuma. Metsu Shoryugeki becomes the Go Shoryuken. The parry animation for Metsu Shoryugeki also looks like Akuma's parry called Rakan. Your Windmill Attack becomes the Tatsumaki Zanku Kyaku. Once you complete a quest, you get this sick quest end screen as well. All these little details make this the greatest collab in the game by far. They put a lot of effort into this one, and it really shows. And now for the collaborations in Sunbreak. <gasps> there are none. At least yet. Give it some time, I'm sure we'll get a few, but at the time of this video dropping, there is zilch. Overall, there were far fewer promotional events in 5th gen compared to the 4th generation games, and a severe lack of goofy, wacky Japanese IPs and anime collaborations that were present in older titles. My hope is that somehow we get at least a few of them to sneak their way into Sunbreak, but now that Monster Hunter events appear worldwide, it's a lot less likely we will see events of the same caliber witnessed in the Japanese-only games, or even in a Western game like Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Which is a shame, because Monster Hunter to me has the absolute best collaborations in any video game series, and it's not even close. There's just something about the grandness of its gameplay with the silliness of those collabs that go together so well. It's a shame that it may not be the same ever again. Well, worst case scenario, we still have access to many of these collaboration quests, weapons, armor, and items within older Monster Hunter titles, so it ain't all that bad. We're finally at the end of the video. We went through an incredibly long list of collaborations. Which one was your favorite? Did any of them surprise you? Will the Fishman Oni haunt your dreams? 
I'm not gonna lie, this video took an extremely large amount of time to make because of how I had to document and research every single one of these collaborations that took place over the last 18 years. But honestly, the process was very enjoyable because of all the crazy stuff I learned about Monster Hunter along the way. So ultimately, I'm really glad I got to go down that rabbit hole, and I hope you guys enjoyed the ride with me today. If you're a fan of Mon Hunt content like this, I would appreciate if you guys took the time to subscribe or check out my Twitch channel for Monster Hunter Mondays. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.